Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Funda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician and a yoga instructor. And in today's talk, I was going to cover marma therapy, specifically the Ayurvedic energy points on the knee. So let's get into it. A note of caution first, the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. It's always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. Individual cases can vary in terms of treatments that are most effective. And also solo therapy, such as doing marma therapy by itself, may not be appropriate or effective in all cases. So, all right, so marma therapy, uh, if you're just tuning in, um, I, marma therapy is part of Ayurveda. Ayurveda is traditional Indian medicine, which is more than 5,000 years old. Part of the reason why I use marma therapy in my practice is because it's non-invasive, so um, I appreciate that a lot instead of my patients. It is an energy therapy, or it comes from an energy paradigm. Uh, there are 117 marma points on the body. Um, so since we're talking about energy therapies and energy paradigms, you have to kind of um, shift your mindset a bit and start thinking about people, diseases, states of health as energy or waves. So especially if you're coming from a biomechanical or biochemical model of health and, and medicine, then it'll be a little bit of a shift. Um, the other thing is that what you're doing here is that by touching the points that I'm gonna talk about, you allow the energies you know, within that point to rebalance themselves, to restore health um, in the person. Uh, so anyway, that's a brief introduction. Um, I have more history on Marma therapy and Ayurveda in my first Marma video, Marma Points on the Hand, so you can check that out. I also have created a Marma Points on the Hand follow along video. So if you want an experience of Marma therapy and you want to kind of learn how to work with the points, um, that's a good example. And again, you can just follow along and get a, um, a therapy actually for yourself. So that's kind of nice. The points I'm going to cover today are points in the knee, and there's a lot of overlap um, with their indications and the energies that they balance. Um, if you want to also check out my lower abdominals video, Marma on the lower abs, Marma on the lower back, and Marma on the thigh, uh, the, those are some of the last videos that I've created for the series. So there's some overlap. You know, you never know which um, points are going to be. Um, kind of most available sometimes, um, depending on what you're doing. And if you like this kind of content, you might want to check out my playlist, Marma Therapy, Ayurveda, and Body Care. I always, um, you know, sort out my videos into the playlist so that they're easy to find. So we're covering six points today, the, and it's sort of nice and that they kind of, I'm going to teach them as pairs because they have um, the same name. Um, so the first two points is call, are called Janu, uh, which means knee in Sanskrit. So there's two of these on each knee, so two on each knee, four total, assuming somebody has two legs, uh, not everybody does. Um, but in any case, there's an anterior Janu and there's a posterior Janu. Anterior Janu, it's right in the center of the patella or kneecap, so you can see the picture here, so right in the middle. Posterior Janu is on the back of the knee. There's a crease on the back of the knee and right in the middle, the midpoint of that crease or popliteal crease, we call it in medical terminology if you wanna use the formal stuff, um, that's posterior Janu. Okay, so exact front of the knee, kind of exact back of the knee. There you go, those are your Janu points. The energies balanced by these points are the Pranavayu, Udhanavayu, Vyanavayu, Apanavayu, Avalambaka Kapha, Kleitika Kapha, and Shlesha Kapha. These terms may not mean anything to you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, this will be, these words will be more meaningful to you if you're a deeper student of Ayurveda. Um, just to give you one example, Shlesha Kapha, Kapha means earth, so it's an earth energy. And Shlesha Kapha is the earth energy that produces fluid or lubrication for joints. So the points here, Janu 1, the anterior Janu and Janu 2, the posterior Janu, uh, they're actually good for increasing lubrication. So if you have something like, well, in, in the knee it's typically osteoarthritis where both the cartilage and the bone are degenerated through inflammation. Um, 
then these points can be helpful. Again, you have to take this in, into consideration, right? I mean, if you're not drinking enough water, if you don't have good oils in your diet, you know, you, you got to draw the, the fluid from somewhere. But using the uh, marma therapy in conjunction with an appropriate diet and appropriate, you know, physical movement, not too much, you know, enough to get some circulation, but not too much where you're further damaging the joint um, will be helpful. So the indications for these um, Johnny points, um, again, all marma points are good for local things. So if you're just starting out here and you have pain in the knee, I would, you know, look at the knee points first. Um, so local things like local pain, um, diff um, dysfunction with the knee, so things like arthritis, stiffness, um, difficult range of motion or limited range of motion. Also circulation in the lower extremities like peripheral vascular disease, neuropathy and edema, and edema um, can play a part in those things. Um, for the posterior genu point only, um, this point also enhances the flow of prana, which is the vital force or life energy of the whole body. Um, it also improves cerebral circulation and vertigo, so there's some indications for um, brain activity. Um, it also relieves respiratory distress, um, asthma, and pulmonary congestion, so it actually improves some lung function. Um, it also can help improve low back pain and sciatica. But again, you know, especially with things like that, you have to determine like what's causing the pain, right? If you have a herniated disc and you know you don't sit properly in your chair, or unsupported in your chair, then there's gonna you know potentially be additional compression on discs that are um, misaligned. Um, so you might need to get realigned, um, but also you need to work on potentially your biomechanics um, so that you're sitting properly. Um, to support your lower back. All right, so those are the two Janu points. Next up, we have two Charna points. Charna means movement in Sanskrit. So you have two of these on each knee, so four total on the body. Um, there's a lateral Charna and there's a medial Charna. So the lateral Charna, the way you find it is it's on the front of the knee here and you basically, it's on the lateral side of the knee, you go down a bit, there's a depression anterior, so in front of and inferior, a little bit lower than the head of the fibula. So there's a bunch of little um, knobs in there if you're not, um, if you don't have medical background. And so it's sort of, there's a little pocket there. If you go below the knob, so we're b way below the patella, the kneecap now, but you'll start to feel um, the knob of the head of the fibula, and if you kind of go down and in a little bit, you'll find this little pocket, and that's charna, um, lateral charna. Medial charna, the way you find it is this is going to be in the medial or inside part of the leg, and if you bend your knee a little bit, and you'll see the crease, right? When we were looking at Janu posterior, we were looking at the popliteal crease, so that crease, if you bend your knee, and you um, go to the end of that crease and then move your finger up about one and a half fingers width, so, or an anguli, um, anguli or basically a finger's width, so about, you know, one and a half, maybe two anguli, superior, so above the crease, um, um, that's where the second charna point is, so that's the medial charna point. All right, so you've got lateral charna and medial charna. The energies balanced by these points are the Vyana Vayu, the Apana Vayu, and the Shlesha Kakafa. So again, more lubrication indications here. Um, as I mentioned, local indications, so things like pain, problems with the knee, arthritis, range of motion, circulation of lower extremities, such as peripheral vascular disease, neuropathy, and edema. The lateral charna is also helpful for kidney function. And the medial charna is good for bladder um, function. So you can work on these points potentially, um, you know, if there's some urinary issues or something like this, you know, it's usually easier to access the knee, like maybe you're sitting on a bus, or something, you know, um, rather than get into the lower back and that sort of thing. So you can actually potentially um, give yourself a marma treatment, you know, as you're riding the bus or as you're in a car or something like that. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, the other thing is that the, uh, depending on which side you're working on, 
the points on the right leg, the Charna points on the right leg are helpful for issues with the ascending colon, so that's the first part of the colon, and the points on the left leg are helpful with problems related to the descending colon. So not only kidney and bladder function, so urinary function, but also, you know, um, having a proper bowel movement and things like that, um, you know, depending on uh, whether it's diarrhea or constipation, diverticulitis, all those sorts of issues that involve the colon can potentially be helped with these points as well. So those are the Charna points. And then the last pair we have here are Indra Busta, which translates to colon bladder. So uh, you can imagine already what these are helpful with. The other thing to remember is that there is an Indra Busta point on the arm. So there's uh, three total. Okay, so don't confuse the arm indrabusta with these indrabusta. Uh, the one on the arm is bahu indrabusta. Um, in any case, there's two on two of these knee indrabustas on each leg, so four total. There's a medial indrabusta, and then there's a posterior indrabusta. The medial indrabusta, um, the way that you find it is that you. Okay, sorry for the interruption. So we were talking about the two indrabuster points on the knee. So there's a medial one, point number five, and a uh, posterior indrabuster point, uh, point number six. So to find medial indrabuster, what you do is you, you can kind of actually go from uh, the last point, the medial charna point. So you're on the inside of the knee. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow down the knee, you're gonna just follow the inside of that kind of shin bone. There's kind of a groove there, yeah? So what you're gonna do is from all those sort of knobby points under the knee, not the patella, the kneecap, you're down a little bit further. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide along that shin bone about four to five anguli, four to five fingers widths, and um, so it's gonna be inferior, lower to, Again, this is good to a lot of technical anatomy stuff. Medial condyle of the fibia, uh, excuse me, tibia. Um, uh, and again, there's a depression there that's just posterior behind the medial crest of the tibia. Okay, so again, that's a lot of verbiage there, but basically you follow along the tibia, there's a little groove there, about four to five fingers widths below all the knobby points of the knee, and that's your point. That's the medial interbusta point. So the poster interbusta point, this is pretty easy to find. It's basically the midpoint of the belly of the gastrocnemius muscle. So that's the kind of big calf muscle on the back of the leg. Okay, so that one should be pretty easy to find. Um, the energies balanced by these points are the Vyana Vayu, the Apana Vayu, the Ranjika Pitta, and the Sataka Pitta. Indications here are local. Um, again, pain, circulation, lower extremities, as we mentioned before. Also, the legs in general um, and cramps, um, because again, there's going to be a lot of people who get cramps, like in the gastrocnemius, for example, or the quadriceps or the hamstrings. Um, these points are also helpful with the small intestines, so things like Crohn's disease and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. They're also helpful with the colon, um, different sorts of dysfunction, such as constipation, diarrhea flatulence, ulcerative colitis, hemorrhoids. There is a laterality here, so the right, the points on the right leg are helpful with the ascending colon, and the points on the left leg are helpful with the descending colon, similar to the Charna points. Um, also, the medial interbusta point um, is helpful with regulating menses, so if there's any, if you know women who are dealing with PMS, painful period, cramps, that sort of thing, um, swelling, this point can be helpful. The medial interbusta point, the posterior point can also be helpful, particularly helpful with muscle cramps and also sciatica, because um, again, that sciatic nerve runs right down the back of the leg. This point also, interestingly, um, it's, it's unusual, or these points are unusual, because they help with emotional disturbance. Specifically, the emotional disturbance they help with are vata type of emotions. Um, vata type of emotions are things like anxiety, insomnia, um, feelings of overwhelm. Um, I did actually create a video on the different types of um, 
like vata, pitta, kapha type of emotional um, issues, mental issues. So you might want to check that video out if, if you're new to vata and pitta and kapha related to, or wind, fire, and earth energy related to um, emotional things um, in Ayurveda or traditional Indian medicine. So those are your two Indra Busta knee points. So I always like to summarize, bring it all together. So again, six points today. We have anterior janu on the front of the knee, posterior janu on the back of the knee, char lateral, char, excuse me, char no lateral. So that's gonna be just down into the outside part of the knee and the front of the knee. There's gonna be char no medial. So that's gonna be on the inside of the knee, a little bit above the popliteal crease. There's indrobusta medial. So that's where you're sliding down the um, inside part of the leg down the tibia and then interbuster posterior so right in the center of the gastrocnemius or calf muscle so again all marma points have local effects um, they do have individual effects though so point number two which is the posterior janu point can enhance flow of prana or um, body energy vital energy of the body um, it the Posterior Johnny point can also have um, help with circulation of the brain. It can help with um, issues in the lungs, and it can help with low back pain and, and issues with the hips, as does uh, point number six, uh, the indrobusta, indrobusta posterior point. Um, and then the charna points we talked about, um, one will help with the bladder, the other will help with the kidneys, right? The lateral and the medial charna points. Um, small intestine will be helped by the interbuster points, points five and six. The colon will be helped by both the charna points as well as both the interbuster points. And then the interbuster points, um, the medial interbuster point will help regulate the menses, and both the interbuster points help with regulating emotions, specifically vata type of emotions. All right, so there you go with the points. And in addition to working with these points um, by just gentle touch, um, like my video on uh, the follow along video on the hand for the hand marma, um, ways to work with these points. So um, I mentioned the gentle pressure with the finger. So again, if you're interested in that, the uh, Marma hands follow along video might be of interest to you. You can also use warm and cool packs, but this again depends on the Vakruti Prakruti. So you have to you have to figure out through Ayurveda what the underlying energies are. So Vata Pitta Kapha, Wind, or Fire, Earth. If you don't know any of that, skip it. Don't worry about it um, because it will the determination or assessment of what energies vata pitta kapha are causing the disorder will determine whether you use warm or cool pack. So again, if that's beyond what you do, forget about it, move on. There's plenty of other ways to work with these points. There's also a byunga, which is warm oil massage. Um, I actually have another video on natural oils. If you want to know what the different energetics from an Ayurvedic perspective are on different oils you can use. Also, you can use breathing and meditation just by thinking about these points and sending your vital energy to these points that can actually help to balance them. Because again, we're talking about an energy paradigm here. You don't necessarily, the other thing is with these points, you don't need to, you know, it, it's not like um, uh, typically in a conventional or Western medical model where, you know, the more, you, the more drug you give or the harder you push, the more effect you get. These are very sensitive points, especially if you have a sensitive issue or a person who's very sensitive. You don't need to do much to get um, a very profound effect. So be gentle um, with yourself. So besides these ways, there's also yoga. So basically any kind of yoga pose that flexes the knee or extends the knee. So you bend the knee or you straighten the knee. You're basically going to be putting some sort of pressure um, on these points. So that's another way to get, get you know, um, the therapy done basically. So things like chair pose or utkatasana, up down dog, down dog, urdhva, adho, mukha, savasana, warrior one and two, the virabhadrasanas, 
forward bend, so things like Uttanasana, Paschimottanasana, Janu Shirshasana, like again, Janu, knee. <laughs> That's where you bend your knee towards you and then the other leg is straight while you're sitting on the floor and you bend forward. If you're not familiar with the um, uh, Sanskrit as some of the yoga poses. There's hero pose, so Virasana, so that's basically you're sitting on bended knees, your bended knees. Child's pose, again, your knees are bent as you lean forward. There's pigeon, like Ikapada Raja Kapatasana. Um, that's where you um, have one knee folded underneath you, the other leg is extended and then you fold forward. Camel, you wouldn't necessarily think about camel because you might think of it as more of like a chest or back, upper back um, type of pose, which it is, and you can use camel for those points as well, marmot points as well, but you are on your knees and as you press your hips forward to get in this pose, you're gonna be pressing on some of these points. So, um, there you go. There's also a bow pose or dhanurasana and lotus pose, so simply, simply sitting cross-legged um, and Padmasana um, is a way to stimulate these points. So you get the you get the idea. So there you have it, six more points. And so we've actually covered 111 um, with this video, 111 out of 117 points. So we've only got one more to go. Um, we have the feet and ankles left to do, so that'll be the next Marma video. Um, again, I hope you're working on these points and, uh, you know, again, use this information when something comes up for you so you can learn them. You know, the more you work with them, the more you repeat the names and the indications and all that kind of stuff, the better you learn them. So, uh, I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Um, I appreciate your time, not only in watching this video, but in helping yourself and potentially others to heal. Because uh, that helps everybody, right? We're all connected. So until the next one, take care. Namaste.